Okay, so we just finished talking about reaction mechanisms and what it means to be a rate determining step. Now we want to talk about what these elementary reaction steps actually mean when I say they're actual molecular events, so they're actual collisions occurring, and that's why we need collision theory. Let's go back to um, talking about an exothermic reaction. And for an exothermic reaction, we might write it as A plus BC, where B and C are bonded, react to form AB plus C plus energy. And so if we were to write a reaction coordinate diagram for an exothermic reaction, what we've done in the past is we've had potential energy on the y-axis, and we've had what we call reaction progress on the x-axis. And for an exothermic reaction, we've always written our reactant um, up high, because as reactants turn into products, then the energy of the actual atoms and bonds themselves is lower. And we've said that this difference was delta H reaction. And um, since it's products minus reactants and the products are lower, that will lead to a negative delta H reaction for an exothermic reaction. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, this bump in the middle. And this bump in the middle is going to be, well, so the height of the bump is the activation energy, which we've talked about. And what exists at the top here is what's called a transition state. And it can be called a transition state. It can also be called a transition state complex, where the term complex refers to the fact that it's not going to be a reactant, it's not going to be a product, um, it's going to be and uh, uh, it's going to be an intermediate. That's what it's going to be. No, it's not going to be an intermediate. It's going to be a transition state complex, and we'll talk about why it's not an intermediate. There. So it's a transition state complex, um, and here it's going to be A, B, C, and we'll tell you why that is in a minute. And you'll notice that A, B, and C is none of these species. And while I'm, oh, so we have the activation energy, we have the transition state complex at the very top, that's A dash B dash C. Uh, that's one of the new things we're introducing here. And while I'm here, I'd also like to do, uh, oh, this is for a one step mechanism. And one step mechanisms don't have intermediate and they don't have catalyst. To have either of those, you need at least two steps. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to draw a two-step reaction mechanism uh, reaction coordinate diagram. And I think I'll draw that in blue. So this is going to be two-step mechanism. That's also going to be exothermic. Thermic. There we go. So PE here, reaction progress down here, reaction progress. And we're still going to have, and I'll put them a little lower here, uh, our reactants and products. So R is for reactants, P is for products. And now when I do our transition state, and I'll still do them in orange, we're going to have one, two, and then we go down to products. So each bump or hump is a step in a reaction mechanism. So each bump is one step in reaction mechanism. 
Um, and uh, let's see if we can go one more color, black. So right here, where you, so we have two steps, and right here is where you're going to have an intermediate lull in energy, and that intermediate lull is where the intermediate uh, will be. So, and in fact, not only will the intermediate be there, but one of the reaction products will also be there as well. But what I want to point out to you is that the intermediate is there. And so please do draw a smiley face in the upper left corner next to the Roman numeral 12 on this page. Okay, so uh, before collision, we've got A plus B, C. And then that's what I'm going to draw in this first box. So I'm going to draw A plus B, C. And these are in the gas phase. So here's A in the gas phase, so it's really moving. And then over here is going to be B, C. And it's really moving as well. And you can almost see that there's going to be a collision. And what we say here is that it's got relatively high kinetic energy because it's moving so fast. And it's got relatively low potential energy because they are stable. And what I mean here is we're going to be uh, right here. So relatively low potential energy means lower than the uh, A-B-C uh, transition state complex. But of course, the products are going to be low. All right. And then during the collision, we're going to have A, B, C. And that is our transition state complex. And it is relatively high, or let's say this, uh, highest T, the highest potential energy. It's the highest point on this uh, uh, right here. So highest point right here, highest potential energy. And it's going to have a relatively low kinetic energy. As you can imagine, these two things come screaming together. They stop for an instant, meaning they have low kinetic energy or they're, I mean, they could be moving a little bit, but they're, so two screaming things collide. They are transferring their kinetic energy into the potential energy. So uh, transferring Ke of their motion into Te to produce or to create, creates a better word because produce means products, create the transition state complex. And after the collision, uh, it doesn't matter how you draw this, but we it will now break up into A, B, and C, and they're going their separate directions. And it's got a relatively high kinetic energy because they're moving fast again. They go, and lowest potential energy because the reaction is exothermic. And so uh, we might call this, let's see if we can do this, so blue. So this is going to be A, B, C. We go back to the previous page. We've got A, B, and C. Those were not the best letters, were they? Well, at least they're in blue. You can use one, two, and three for ABCs because I know mean, I'm using a lot of ABCs already. That's collision theory. And collision theory, we need to talk about it when we talk about reaction mechanisms because reaction mechanisms involve actual collisions. Now, there are three things that are necessary for a reaction to occur. First, the particles must collide. Second, 
they must collide in the proper orientation. And so if you want to form, so let's see this. So we have, uh, this is uh, incorrect orientation. Uh, this would be the correct orientation if you want the CO2 to form in this particular example anyway. Um, so correct orientation. Because what you can imagine is there are, when you have gas phase particles moving around very fast, there are going to be millions, if not billions of collisions. Not all of them are cause reaction. Okay. So one of the things that helps to cause reaction is correct orientation. Um, and then the other thing is they must collide with sufficient energy to form the transition state. Excuse me. The energy available depends on the speed of the particles. And we know, so let's see, kinetic energy equals one half mv squared. Mass is m, v is velocity. And if we go back to Gen Chem 1, we had what's called the Boltzmann distribution. And the Boltzmann distribution has on its y-axis fraction of particles. And on the uh, x-axis, it has kinetic energy. And we drew it like this. So let's see. Uh, uh, something like that. And the key parts of this picture are it has to start at the origin and it has to have a hump and then come back down and touch the x-axis. And we might call this low uh, T. And then this will be high T, high temperature. And uh, when a reaction, for a reaction to occur, that reaction must have, uh, a sufficient energy. And again, we're talking generic terms here, like we're not going to give numbers for this. But let's say that in order to collide and cause reaction, you need this amount of kinetic energy. So this amount of kinetic energy causes reaction. You can see that the more particles are have this kinetic energy at higher uh, higher temperatures, so higher T, more particles have sufficient energy, sufficient kinetic energy to cause reaction. Uh, and sufficient or uh, enough to cause reaction. And so, uh, but even if, let's see, even if, oh, here's my, here's my example. So here, uh, my re, uh, reaction is going to occur when they have, let's see, proper orientation to cause a reaction. If they don't have proper reaction, the cap will never go on the pen. Um, and then they have to have sufficient kinetic energy to do it, which this one is a better example of orientation than uh, kinetic energy. But um, those are the three factors. So there are many reactions that don't have these correct things. So they don't have the correct orientation, or sorry, there are many collisions that do not have the correct orientation. There are many collisions for all of these particles. So all of the fractions of particles down here can collide all they want. They're not going to have enough energy so not enough energy. To react. To react. And so you can imagine that, so, bonk, 
low energy collision, could even have the proper orientation, still not going to react. High energy collision, proper orientation, causes reaction. So that's what collision theory tells us. And that's how when you do remember the activation energy, the activation energy is, uh, has a prefactor A, and that prefactor A is uh, relatable to the number of collisions with the proper orientation. And then there is an exponential factor of energy that how many of those collisions have enough energy to react.